Hi, I'm Van Phillips, European Tour winner and PGA coach, and today's lesson's all about the sand. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about equipment first. I've got a 56 degree sand iron here and I'm going to give you a couple of approximate yardages to let you know when to switch to a more lofted wedge. So I recommend you have a 56 and a 60 in your bag and anything less than 15 yards I would recommend that you go to your 60. Anything sort of 15 to 25 yards I would recommend you go to the 56. So some ballpark numbers there, but they'll help you if you stick to that general approxim approximation. Too many people go for the 60 all the time because now everybody's been influenced to get a lob wedge. It is a good club to have in your bag, but just remember Seve Ballesteros and those guys used to use a 56 all the time. A 60 didn't even exist and they were pretty phenomenal from sand. So the longer sort of medium range to longer range bunker shots is actually going to help you to use a slightly less lofted club because it can be very difficult to get that sort of distance with your 60. So this is a 20 yard shot I'm going to be illustrating in this video and therefore it's over that 15 yard uh, margin and I've got my 56. Bounce is another thing you've got to consider. This has got 8 degrees of bounce which is about medium. 4 would be low, 10 and above would be high. So I've got a medium bounce wedge and again, I'd recommend that really, because that's going to give you the widest range of variability. If you've got a really low bounce, that's great in hard bunkers, not great in deep bunkers. And if you've got high bounce, it's great in deep bunkers and not great in high bunkers, so hard bunkers. So get a medium range bounce, I would advocate for most amateurs. If you're a really good player, five to scratch, then you can go lower bounce. But there's some general equipment uh, advice for you there. So. I'm going to get stuck into the setup from face on now. I'm going to move back to my golf ball here. Face on aspects. I want you guys to get a nice wide base, okay? Where the sand is unstable, so you know it's easy to lose your footing. Get a wide base and have a little shuffle in there. Get yourself solid. I'd like the ball to be forward somewhere around middle of the forward peck or even forward armpit there. The bunker's the only shot in golf that we actually want to hit it fat. We want to hit the ground before the ball, or the sand before the ball. So get that ball a little bit forward, that's going to help you to do that. We want that club face to be a little bit open. If we take the leading edge as a guide and we stick it vertically up in the air, I'd like you to swivel it somewhere between 20 and 30 degrees to the right away from the target. So use that leading edge there as your guide, swivel it to the right there. Again, there's nothing set in stone. You've got to play around with that. All we're trying to do is use that bounce a bit more. When we open a club, we effectively increase the bounce of that club a little bit, and we want that in a bunker. So slightly open, then take your grip, okay? Don't grip it and then twist it, because obviously your forearms are then going to re-rotate and it'll be a waste of time. So get it twisted, then take your normal grip. Now I want to talk a little bit about grip. Peter Cowan's a great bunker teacher, uh, obviously teaches some of the best players in the world, and he advocates that we actually have a weak grip so we get that trail hand and rotate it a bit more over towards the target, and that will help you to keep the face open through impact, which is a good thing. Again, I'm not saying you should definitely do that, but it's something to experiment with. So if you're struggling with rotating that face closed in the bunker, try and take your trail hand and rotate it over the top more, and that will help you to keep it open. So wide stance, shuffle in the sand, ball forward, got that face slightly open. I'm gonna go with that slightly weak grip. I quite like to keep that club face open now swing aspects. I'm going to go ahead and hit one in full speed and then I'm going to hit one in slow motion. And what I want you to look for is when I'm swinging in the sand, I'm really conscious that to use that bounce, I've got to get the club head working a little bit faster than the grip. So I'm going to feel like I let that club head release. I'm going to feel like my wrists give way a little bit, which is totally opposite to what we'd want to do in a big swing. We'd want to keep those wrists 
firm, we'd want that lead wrist to actually be slightly bowed with the long shots. But in the bunker, we want the bounce of the club to hit the sand. So I'm going to be letting the club head pass my hands. And that's something that can be difficult to get used to. You've got to practice doing that many times in a practice bunker to get the feel of it. So I'm going to go ahead here. I'm putting all those setup aspects into play. And I just want you watching for how I bounce the club head past my hands. And I'm gonna show you in slow motion as well after. So here goes full speed. Watch out for the slow-mo. Okay, hopefully you saw there from that slow-mo just how much I let that club pass my hands through impact. If you stop it at impact, you'll see pretty much that my hands and club face are level with each other. You won't see a lot of shaft lean as you would do with a full shot there. So down the line aspects then, aiming's a big one. People always think, oh, I've opened the club face. How does that affect where I aim? Well. When we've got all this loft on the club, even a 56, not, you know, I'm not even talking about 60, 56 with an open face is almost 60 degrees aloft anyway. What generally happens is the ball will go much closer to the direction that you swing and not where the club's pointing. So you can aim pretty much as you would do normally with a parallel hip, shoulder and foot line to the flag. Now, you may find that the open club makes it go a tiny bit to the right and you can alter but that's a bit of a trial and error thing and literally you only want to aim I'd hit maybe 10 bunker shots in a row in a practice bunker and try and get a gist for just how much to the right they're taking off and literally accommodate with your aiming so let's say you, you find after 10 or 15 shots that your shots are generally one or two yards to the right of where you're swinging to literally aim one or two yards left so that's something that's pretty personal actually. Different people can aim straight, other people need to aim a little bit to the left. It's quite personal, you need to experiment with that. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit one in full speed again, and then another one in slow motion. And again, I want you to look for the club releasing. I also want you to look for the fact that I'm not gonna swing across the ball. That's another big cliche. People teach bunker shots and they they think or people think when they play a bunker shot they need to swing across the ball once you've aimed the club face slightly open you've taken your stance i want you to feel like you make a pretty neutral swing a normal swing around your body if you like i don't want you to feel like you pick the club up and chop across the ball you don't need to do that in the sand go ahead and watch this swing So I'm going to hit one in slow-mo for you now and you'll see just how normal that swing path is. I don't pick the club up really steeply. That's the thing to look for in this slow motion section. Okay, so hopefully from that slow motion video there, you could see that I wasn't aiming way to the left. I was aiming very parallel to my target. The ball took off very much in the direction of my swing. And I want you to really go back and watch how my backswing is very much in harmony with the rotation of my trunk. I don't pick those arms up very steeply. So for all intents and purposes, I'm making a normal swing. What I've changed is my club face position, I've changed my release action. I'm releasing that club head much earlier. I'm allowing the club to pass my hands at impact and just beyond impact. So it's very much a throwing feeling, if you like. We're throwing that club head. And I talk about on my website, so head over there uh, to www.vanphillips.co.uk where there's a whole bunker series there and I get into great detail 
about the technique but in a nutshell we want to keep that swing rounded following the rotation of the trunk get that head releasing use that bounce and work out the alignment that works for you and it won't be miles to the left or miles open hope you're enjoying these videos please subscribe if you're not subscribed already and i look forward to seeing you in the next video Thank you.